Andrew's third question. We cannot forget to bring up the influence Blavatsky had on Crowley's development. Where do you see major disconnects between the Theosophical Society's cosmology and the cosmology of Thelema? Firstly, in dealing with Theosophy and Thelema, we must note both are originally trans-channeled myths that purportedly expound upon certain ancient documents. In the case of HPB, this was the Stanzas of Jayan documents written in pre-Sanskrit Senzar language and supposedly part of the Gui D section of Tantras in Buddhist scriptures. In the case of Crowley, this was the Stele of Revealing, exhibit number 666 in the Bullock Cairo Museum. Both authors claim to be receiving their revealed claims from another supernatural form of source as well. Blavatsky recorded about writing Isis Unveiled, the presence of the lodger who is in me as an inspirational muse responsible for dictating most of this work. This is, of course, in addition to her claims about the masters of the ancient wisdom or ascended masters, su such as Moria, Hilarion, Serapis Bay, and Kutumi, or telepathic teachers who chose to incarnate and who were then congregated in Tibet. Crowley, likewise, described Iwas as the dictator of his interpretation of the stele of revealing into his Book of the Law or Liber Legis, later associating this discarnate being with his own holy guardian angel in the equinox of the gods, as a minister of Horpakrat, Greek Harpocrates, in A.L. Book 1, verse 7, as the voice of the eighth ether in Liber 418, Crowley's vision and the voice, Blue Equinox, and ultimately with the devil in magic and theory and practice. As such, the cosmologies between these two authors, as such, the cosmologies these two authors described were vastly different. In the Secret Doctrine's twin volumes, one, Cosmogenesis, and two, Anthropogenesis, HPB describes her concept of the current cosmos as Maya, a temporary illusion, and as an expression of the primordial force of Fohat, emanated as the seven rays called the Diane Kohans. HPB claimed that every solar system is an expression of a logos or solar deity, and that within each of these were seven ministers or planetary spirits, such that each planet to form has a sevenfold constitution known as the planetary chains, wherein the planet's physical globe overlaps in the same space with two astral bodies, two mental bodies, and two spiritual bodies. According to HPB, evolution occurred along a descending and then ascending arc from one end of these chains to the other, and stated that this took the form of phases of evolution of matter on the planet, from mineral onto vegetable, animal, human, and then to superhuman, and that these occurred on multiple planets successively, such that when the era of mineral evolution on one planet ended, it would begin on the next, and so forth. The result of this spiritual evolution here on Earth were, as described extensively in Secret Doctrine Volume 2, the seven root races, each of which was divided into seven sub-races. 
She described the first root race as living in the imperishable sacred land, and the second, the Hyperboreans, as living near the North Pole. The third root race lived in Lemuria, modern Australia, and the fourth in Atlantis, where they had psychic powers and advanced technology given to them by higher beings who descended to the planet and bred giants who raised Stonehenge, as well as modern gorillas and chimpanzees by mating with the she-animals of this era. She called the fifth root race the Aryans and claimed the sixth root race would be heralded by the coming of Maitreya, a messianic figure from Mahayana Buddhism. <clears throat> in Crowley's Liber Legus, we are introduced to his interpretation of the ancient Egyptian goddess of the night sky, Nut, which Crowley called Nuit, associated with limitly vast space, and of the solar disk god, Heru Betiti, called in Greek Hadith, which Crowley called Hadith, and associated with an infinitesimally finite amount of space. These twin deities consummate and yield a third, called Heru Raha, whose active aspect is called Rahor Kuit and whose passive aspect is called Horpa Krat, dubbed in Crowley's texts, the crowned and conquering child. In the introduction to Liber Legis, Crowley notes that these three prime deities, one of these is in charge of notes about these three prime deities. One of these is in charge of the destinies of this planet for periods of 2,000 years and adds, the moment of change from one period to another is technically called the equinox of the gods. He further, he further identifies Nuit with Isis, Hadit with Osiris, and Heru-Raha with Horus and associates the era of Osiris as beginning 500 BC. In later works, Crowley also described the goddess Babylon, a virgin whore and scarlet woman, as well as two Megatherion, the great beast on which Babylon rides. Although he imagined dozens of new deities, including Koran's own, the demon of dispersion, that appear in the Night of Pan, N-O-X, in the City of the Pyramids, as described in his Vision and the Voice Blue Equinox writings. <clears throat> 